Hello and welcome to yet another episode of your favorite educational program, AP Statistics. Today we're going to cover Lesson 3.3. It's such an important lesson that I'm breaking it up into two lessons. So today, 3.3, um, we're going to talk about least squares regression. Uh, and then next time we'll spend some more time on this lesson and we'll cover residual plots. Now it's, uh, again, such an important lesson because we're going to use it throughout the rest of chapter three, uh, also throughout all of chapter four, and we will use it again in chapter 14. So chapter four, we're gonna do regression on curved uh, data sets, and chapter 14, we're gonna do inference on linear regression. So um, when you start thinking about, there's 14 chapters in total, and three of them involve this topic, uh, it's a pretty good chunk of our curriculum and it will definitely appear on the AP exam. So you'll want to really focus on this lesson and make sure you understand it. All right, so this is the idea of least squares regression. You have bivariant data, right? Two variable data, x, y points, um, and of course they're both quantitative. That allows you to create a scatter plot. Now in the past, you've probably looked at scatter plots and your teachers have said, oh, draw a line of best fit. And they just let you eyeball that line. Well, how do you know if your line or my line is better, more accurate, right? Anytime we're kind of eyeballing things and being real subjective in math, that's where we can improve. So um, this is, a method that's going to give everyone the same exact equation um, and it will be the best possible equation. So that's called the least squares method. Um, we're going to abbreviate least squares regression line, LSRL. And here's how the method works. Um, I could draw all kinds of lines through this data set, but the least squares method is going to look at the vertical distance between each and every point and the line. And then we're going to square all of those distances. And there is one such line in existence that will minimize the sum of those squares. And that line is called the least squares regression line. Okay, so that's what this method is doing for us. Okay, uh, again, I want to point out the wording. When we talk about linear uh, regression or when we talk about a scatter plot with you know bivariant data, data, we say y on x, right? Y variable on x, that's the order that it's written. Okay, so um, I also again wanna stress, it's the vertical distances that are being minimized, not the perpendicular distance, not the horizontal distance, but the vertical distance. Okay. Um, those vertical distances uh, have actually a couple names. One thing that we call them, we call them the errors. Okay, so to get the error, you take the observed y coordinate and then you subtract away the predicted y coordinate, right? And then, so they're both basically using the same exact x, and that's what um, makes it a vertical distance. Okay, so error is one word. The other word we'll use is residual. Um, and that's something we're gonna make um, in the future, residual plots, okay? We're gonna plot those errors. Um, notice, this is subtraction. Subtraction is not commutative. So we take the observed y value, so the y coordinate from our data point, and then we subtract away the y coordinate from the line. So anytime you have a positive error, positive residual, that means your point is above the line. So all of these points up here will have positive errors or residuals. Okay, whenever you have a negative error or a negative residual value, that means your point is below the line. Um, now, uh, students will often say, well then, okay, great. Why do we have to do this whole square process? Well, because if I didn't square, then the positives and negatives would cancel each other out, okay? So what we're doing is we're squaring all the values, so now when I find the sum, things aren't canceling out on me. All right, so here's the equations uh, that make it work. 
Okay, so as we mentioned, it's linear um, regression, so that's why we see a linear equation right here. So A is your, is your y-intercept, B is your slope, X is, of course, X, your explanatory variable. Now, this right here might be new to you guys. It's Y, but it has this little funky thing on top, okay? That symbol is called a hat. That's a hat. So you read this as Y hat. Y hat. Now, the hat is there. You can't just ignore it. It's there to tell you something important. It's telling you that this is a statistic. This linear equation that we made came from sample data, which makes it a statistic. Okay. Later on, when we get to chapter 14, uh, we'll talk about there's some unknown parameter. There's some unknown perfect best fit line. Um, but this, of course, is not that perfect best fit line. This is the line that best fits our sample bivariant data, right? Which means it's a statistic because it came from sample data, right? It's not a parameter. A parameter comes it, uh, from a census from the entire population. So anyway, that's our equation. Please don't forget the hat when you do these equations. That's a common mistake. All right, so now the two pieces of the puzzle, since it's linear, we need a slope, we need an intercept, okay? The slope we find right here. It's the correlation from less than 3.2, right? Correlation coefficient. And that gets multiplied by the sample standard deviation of y over the sample standard deviation of x. That gives me the slope. And that should make sense because you've always thought of slope as change in y over change in x, right? Um, now, these formulas do appear on your formula sheet. Okay, so there's the y hat, there's the slope, but the third formula looks a little different on your formula sheet, right? It's solved for y bar. So it says y bar equals the intercept plus b times x bar, okay? But I'm not sure why they give it to you in that format because we're usually not solving for y bar. Usually we have y bar because we have the data. Um, it's the intercept that we're interested in. So I just took this formula that they gave me um, and I solved it for the intercept for A. So, right, you just subtract, it's just algebra, right? Subtract B X bar and you have it solved for A. Um, so you'll be using this formula um, from the formula sheet, but this is the format that you're gonna use it in, okay? All right. Now, that brings me to one other very important thing that we're covering in this lesson, the coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination is simply r squared, right? the square of the correlation coefficient. And you may have noticed that last lesson that your calculator was spitting out both r and r squared. That wasn't a mistake. They're both very valuable um, things to know. The correlation coefficient, so that's just plain old r, it tells you the direction and the strength of the relationship. Really important, really useful. But r squared tells me the amount of change in y that is explained by my least squares regression of y on x. So in other words, here's another way of say saying it. Um, it's the fraction of variation of your y variable, your response variable, uh, that's explained by a change in your explanatory variable. And right there, it should be like, boom, mind blown, right? That's huge. That's the whole point of doing bivariant data and having an explanatory variable and a response variable, right? This is telling me the relationship between those two variables and how much that explanatory variable is actually explaining um, so let me give you, rather than just saying y and x, let me give you a real-world example. Let's say I collected data um, from my students, and I said, how many hours did you study for the last test? Wrote that down. And then I looked up that student's test grade. Wrote that down. I now have an ordered pair, right? Bivariant data. Then I could plot all those points. I could do regression. 
and I could calculate my coefficient of determination. And I could then say, oh, maybe I get 0.9. I would say, oh, 90% of a student's grade can be explained by how many hours they studied. That would be really powerful to know. Maybe when I did the, did the calculation, I got 0.1, and then I'd say, oh, only 10% of a student's grade uh, is explained by the number of hours they studied. Okay, so um, that's the coefficient of determination, and, and hopefully you can see how powerful um, that that value is. One more thing, let me stress, vocabulary, vocabulary, vocabulary. Every year, students confuse the vocabulary for the coefficient of determination, which is R squared, and the correlation coefficient, which is R, right? Because they both have the word coefficient in there. Um, just remember, R squared, right? That's determining, right? It's helping you determine the relationship between that explanatory and that response variable. So R squared is the coefficient of determination. So make sure to keep that straight. Okay, how do you calculate R squared? Well, there's a couple ways. The simple way is if you already have R, the correlation coefficient, you could just square it. And there you go. Um, another way I will show you in another slide or two. So hold on for that. Okay, last thing I wanted to go over on this slide uh, is just a property of the least square regression line. So it doesn't really, doesn't really fit the, the coefficient of determination, but I had to throw it in somewhere. Anytime you do least square regression, the resulting equation will pass through the point x bar, y bar, right? The mean of all the x coordinates, comma, the mean of all the y coordinates. Um, it's just the way the formulas work. This is a property. It will happen. Whether that point is in the data set or not doesn't matter. It will always go through that point. Uh, so knowing that fact is helpful. It, it will allow you to sometimes check your equation. That's, that's one thing you could use it for. Um, but other times, it can help you actually write the equation. Um, maybe you have this point, this x bar, y bar, and then somebody also tells you the y-intercept. Well, now you have just a simple algebra problem, right? Two points, write a, a line that goes through them. Maybe you have the x bar, y bar, and you have the slope. Well, okay, again, slope and a point, I can use that to write an equation. So um, knowing this little fact sometimes is necessary to know that in order to do a problem based on the information given. So you'll just want to commit that fact to memory. All right, let's do an example problem. Uh, so real simple, small data set, since it's our first problem and you just need to see how things work. Okay, so three points. Um, looking at the X coordinates, two, four, six, the Y coordinates, eight, 10. If that had been 12 right there, I wouldn't have to use least square regression. The points would be collinear. Cool could just use algebra write an equation that went through any two of the points and it will go through the third point because they'd be collinear, but they're not collinear. So now I need this method, okay? So step one, right? Looking at your formulas, I need to find a slope. I need to find an intercept. Well, here's how I find my slope. Oh, sorry, here's my formula. I need a slope and an intercept. So um, here's my slope. So I need to find the correlation, multiply it by sample standard deviation of y over sample standard deviation of x. Okay, then I also need the mean of x and the mean of y. So real simple. I put the data in my calculator. And the simplest thing to do is put your x values in list one, your y values in list two. You don't have to do that, but that's just straightforward. Okay, then go to stat, calculate, and choice number two bivariant or two variable statistics. Okay, so I'm gonna choose that. If I just hit enter now, it'll calculate two variable statistics and it will assume X is in list one and Y is in list two. Uh, if I wanted to specify some other location, I start by specifying where to find X, then a comma, then I say, where do I find my Y? And then this is something I wanna add on. I put one more comma because I would like the calculator, um, actually no, I'll just stop right there. So I'll stop there. There's my two variable stats, okay? 
mean of x, sample standard deviation of x. I need both of those values for these formulas. Mean of y, sample standard deviation of y. I needed those. So jot those down. Okay, only one more piece of the, of the puzzle now. I need r. Well, here's the formula for r. We covered that last time. So you can calculate r using this formula. Or I did show you the shortcut. And you'll notice the shortcut will actually give you the equation. But let's pretend that it doesn't. So I can go to calculate. And there's the two choices on the linear regression. I'm going to actually use this second one because remember our formula sheet decided to call B the slope. So just to avoid any confusion, I'm going to call B the slope. So I'm just going to use that one. All right, now here, again, default, the calculator will go to list one for X. It'll go uh, to list two for Y. Oh, and let me show you, what if, I, what if I mess something up? Let's say I tell it list one is X and list three is Y. Watch what happens. It'll say invalid dimension. And here's Y. It's looking for ordered pairs. Here's my X coordinate. Wait, my Y coordinate is missing. So the calculator, when it gives you an error like that, it's telling you, hey, things aren't matching up. Try again, right? So list one, oops. List one and then Y was in list two. And now here's where I'm gonna put on one more comma and I'm gonna to go to variables. I'm gonna to go to Y variables, and this is important to notice. Notice number one, it says function. Okay, so I choose that. And then I'm gonna have it put the function into my Y sub one menu. Okay, remember though, function, this is functional notation that it's using. And that's gonna be handy later. All right, so there's my, my R value, my correlation coefficient. Now I can use my formulas. Okay, so I would start here, take the R value, that guy, multiply it by the uh, sample standard deviation of Y, divide it by the sample standard deviation of X, and that'll give me my, my slope. Okay, so that's right here. There's my slope, right? So this, this piece right here, right, that's my slope. Okay, and then to get my intercept, I'm gonna take Y bar minus that slope times X bar, right? Y bar minus that slope times X bar. So this bit here, all right, that's how I find my intercept. Oops. Okay, work that out and we get that equation, which my calculator already gave to me. So um, that's the moral of the story. The calculator will do just about anything we need it to do and spit out the answer for us. So. Yeah, the formulas are handy if you're doing it by hand, but most of the time, if we have the data, we're just gonna go right here and there's my answer. You know, yeah, there's R squared. Okay. All right, um, I did mention there was another way to find R squared, All right? That's the way we're gonna find it most of the time, but um, I could set up a problem where I don't give you the data. Maybe I give you SSM and SSE. So then you would just plug it into this formula. Um, this is not on the formula sheet though. All right, so let me go through this formula real quick. SSM, it's the sum of the squares about the mean of Y. Your book, I believe, calls it SST. Um, most books call it SSM because sum of the squares about the mean, right, SSM. So I'm calling it SSM. 
And the way you calculate it, you take each y coordinate, one at a time, obviously, and you subtract the y bar value, the mean of the y values. You square all those differences and find the sum. And sum of the squares about the mean of y. That's SSM. All right, here's SSE, sum of the squares of error. And again, you start by taking each y coordinate one at a time, and then you subtract away the predicted y coordinate, right? The y coordinate from the line that you created, the least square regression line. Those are the errors. So you're finding the errors, you're squaring them, you're taking their sum, and that's why we call it sum of the squares of error. So um, let's just do, say that, that first one by hand. Actually, we'll do the whole problem. Let's do the whole problem. So we're gonna use the same data and we're gonna calculate R squared. Oops, I'm trying not to reveal the whole thing. All right. So my first column is gonna give me SSM, right? The mean. So I take my Y value, eight, right? I'm gonna do eight minus the y bar, which we said was 11, and I'm gonna square it. My next y value is 10 minus the mean of y, and my last one was 15 minus the mean of y. And I'm gonna square those all, and, right, nine, one, 16. And then find the sum, so there's SSM. All right, now the SSE, a little bit trickier. Let's get a new piece of paper here that I haven't written on. All right. So I, again, I start with my Y coordinate, which in this case was eight. Now I have to subtract away the Y coordinate of the line at the same X value. Okay, well, remember my line was Four, yeah, four plus 1.75x. So I have to put two into that equation and that will tell me the predicted y value, right? So I'm gonna subtract. Okay, so that's my error. Uh, and the whole reason I'm doing this calculation, you're probably not going to really ever use this, uh, but you will find errors. That's what the next lesson is all about. So knowing how to find these errors will help you find the errors or residuals in the next lesson for when we make residual plots. Okay. So that right there is the error for the first point. Okay. So let's work that out. So you see my first point has an error of one half. That means the first point is one half of a unit above the line. Okay, And then we do the same thing for the next two points. Okay, Again, notice how the X coordinate changes because again, we have to make sure we're vertically uh, in alignment because we're finding the vertical distances. Okay, we find the sum, and there's my SSE, sum of the squares of about the error. Now, that right there, that's the category that we minimize when we perform least squares regression. Um, any other line would end up with a larger value right here. This is the line that gives me the smallest possible number right there. Okay? So, SSM minus SSE over SSM. There's the R squared, and that is the same R squared that we found when we did linear regression. Okay, there we go. The coefficient of determination. So that's the other um, formula for it. Okay, all right. Um, last thing that I wanted to show you.
is how to do that in a quicker way. So remember, I stored the equation right there in, in the y sub 1. So I hit y equals, and there's the equation that I stored. Okay. By the way, I can graph it. And so now I, I've done my scatter plot. I see the three points. I see they're not collinear. I see the least square regression line that we calculated and saved. And I can visually see, oh yeah, the first point was a half unit above vertically. The second point was one unit below, again, vertically. And the third uh, point was a half unit above vertically. Um, and again, notice, if I just added those without squaring them, a half plus negative one plus a half, it would be zero. They cancel each other out. That's why I need to square them first. All right, so now here is the cool thing. Since I have that equation stored, and you're gonna do this calculation a whole bunch for the rest of chapter three and throughout chapter four. Okay, I can go into a blank list, highlight the top of the list, and now it says list three equals. I can enter a formula, and I can define this list with a formula. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to define this list to find the errors for me. So my errors are found by taking my Y coordinate, which is in list two, minus my Y hat, my predicted Y value from the equation that I have stored. So I'm gonna do minus variables, Y variables again, this is functional notation, function where I've stored it. And now when I hit enter, it's gonna spit out the errors for me or residuals, okay? And let's walk through why that's the case. So for the first entry, it's gonna look right there for the number eight. Then it's gonna subtract. And since this is functional notation, I'm telling the calculator, plug two into the stored equation. Work it out. Okay, and then for the next entry, it's gonna work its way down. So it's like a spreadsheet. Uh, and again, this is not saying Y1 times L1. No, that's not what it's saying. It's functional notation. It's saying plug that list one value into the stored function. So when I hit enter, there we go. There are my three errors, as we said before. 0.5 for the first point, negative one for the second, and 0.5 for the third. Um, so we're gonna do a whole bunch of that. Um, throughout the rest of the chapter, throughout chapter four as well. Those are the errors or residuals. Um, if you wanted to, you could square them, find the sum, and you would get the 1.5 that we already found. Okay, so there we go. Hopefully uh, that makes sense. And all I can tell you is we're going to use this a lot. So practice it. Do plenty of extra practice if you're not getting it, and come in and ask or help if you are still not getting it. All right, thanks for watching and have a good day.